Welcome back to Have a Crack. We're doing jaffles today, three different sorts, breakfast jaffle, lunch jaffle, and even a dessert jaffle. We're in the Victorian high country today, down by the Hakwa River. I've got the fire going, things are getting ready. Let's get into it. First jaffle that we're doing is a breakfast jaffle, bacon, egg, cheese, with some, with some little change-ups, I guess. Um, so we're gonna cut the bacon up first. I see so many people doing um, breakfast jaffles or bacon and egg jaffles and not cooking your bacon first. I think that's a big bloody mistake. So we're just gonna chop this up fairly small because with jaffles, you don't wanna take a bite and have the whole damn thing come out of the sandwich in your hand. That I think is a mistake. So we're just gonna chop this up reasonably small, not too small, that'll do us. I'm gonna get this on the frying pan and get it all crispy. Get that on there first. Doesn't seem like a big deal, but chopping that bacon up, it's going to make the world of difference to doing a bacon and egg sandwich. Trust me when you do this, whether it's a jaffle or it's just a bacon and egg roll, chop the bacon up, it's, just do it. Really, you can put anything in a jaffle. With this combination, you've got bacon, which is salty, bacon, which is greasy, and then the maple syrup, which is sweet. Those three things make things delicious. So we'll wait till this bacon's almost done, then we'll put some maple syrup onto it, and then get it into a jaffle. Oh, that's nearly done. So we're starting to get some crispy bits on here now. Now we'll get a bit of this sticky goodness into it. You don't want to have heaps because then you'll end up with just a sticky mess and it'll be horrible to clean. Just going to leave this on here for about another 30 or 40 seconds. Then we'll get it into a jaffle. There's all different ways that you can prepare the bread or prepare the jaffle, I should say. One is putting oil directly into the jaffle, which is which is fine, into the jaffa line. This is the other way. You'll butter this bread, then turn it upside down, inside out sort of thing. So that this buttered side is actually hitting onto the cast iron of your jaffa line. That's good to go. Well, because it's a new jaffa line as well, I'll throw some butter into that, with some oil into that, and season it properly. That's a hot jaffa line. So when we load this up, we'll get that down first. We're going to get an egg on top of that straight away. Break the yolk of the egg because you don't want that spilling everywhere all over you. Little bit of cheese. That will do. Then some of this delicious maple bacon. If you're a tomato sauce fan, you can throw some tomato sauce on here. I think with the maple bacon, it does all the flavoring that you really want. The main thing I see people doing with Jaffa Lions that doesn't quite work is positioning this second piece of bread. When you do this, push this bread a little bit off center, maybe half a centimeter to a centimeter towards the hinge. That way when it closes, it'll actually come up nicely together. We'll hook that on and go and throw it in the fire. All right, first jaffle is done. Let's have a look at how it turned out. <laughs> pretty, pretty bloody good, I would say. A little bit burnt on the edges, but hey, it's campfire cooking. Well, let's cut this open. We'll see what it looks like. I think it's going to look pretty darn good. Oh yeah, it looks good. And smells delicious. And it is delicious. I'm not about to tell you that it tastes like shit because I just told you how to make it. But this is really good. Easy, really tasty. And better than just your regular bacon and egg jaffle. All right, the second one that we're making is a lunchtime jaffle. And I'm using some leftovers from last night. And basically what we're making here is a nacho jaffle. This one, my wife came up with the idea when I was, when I was coming up with some ideas to, to show you guys. Um, she said, well, why not do it with this and this? And I was like, that sounds awesome, we're doing that. Here's the jaffa iron, and we're gonna load it up the same way we've been loading up everything else. So the bread face down, we'll get a little bit of cheese. It doesn't really matter which way you layer all this because it, it flips while it's in the fire. I don't want too much in there. Just enough to cover it all, that's good. We'll get some of this mince into there. 
This is cold out of the fridge, it'll heat up in the fire, I'm not concerned about that. This here, I got into camp reasonably late yesterday, so this was ridiculously easy to make um, when you're so late to camp. All right, that's in there. Um, just move that around so it's reasonably centered. I'm gonna get some of this salsa to put on there. Not too much, you don't want it to be too, too gooey, if you like, of, an, of a jaffle. It will be packed pretty full on. And then a little bit of sour cream, spread it around. It's important to spread this stuff around because you don't want to be eating your jaffle and then all of a sudden getting a full on mouthful of sour cream. Now the weird thing we're gonna put in here is corn chips. And when Sarah first said, use corn chips, I thought, that's ridiculous. And then I thought about it, I went, that's an incredibly good idea. Cool, here's the nacho jaffle. <laughs> that looks and smells delicious. Let's cut this open, we'll see. Very crunchy as you would expect. <laughs> that was such a good idea, that's worked really well. It smells awesome. <laughs> that's really good. It's everything that you wanted in a taco or a nacho. Got the crunchy, crunchy corn chips, the salsa. You might have seen some corn in that in the mince. We generally do that when we make tacos. It just gives it a little bit of burst of moisture and sweetness. That is really good. I'm so impressed with that. Third one we're doing is a dessert one. I'm gonna get some bread, two fruits, and some custard. Yep, that's right. <laughs> two pieces of bread. We're gonna do the same thing. We are using a different Jaffa line here, you'll see, using the round one. The round one, I'm using that one because I'm guaranteed to get a seal, because this uh, around the edge, this, the, um, the, the, the ingredients that we're putting into this <clears throat> maybe a bit sloppy when it's cooked, when you bite into it. So we don't want, um, like on the regular Jaffa line, it's looking for the butter, on the regular Jaffa line, it doesn't seal, that one that I've got is actually a really big one. You need, you need really big bread and it doesn't always get a perfect seal. So it's gonna butt it in the middle of this just so it doesn't stick to, the Jaff line, and the pie iron in this case. What would be a good addition to this, and I'm actually gonna try it next time, because I only just thought of it a few minutes ago, would be to use raisin, raisin bread with this, like fruit loaf. So I'm just gonna use some two fruits here. Drain off as much of the juice as you can when you're using this. And a little bit in there that we want, that'll do. And get a little bit of custard. And throw it in there as well. This will go pretty runny when it's heated up. So just be mindful of that. Do the same thing there. And then across. And we're gonna cut the edges off this because it'll burn. We're good to go to the fire. I would say that's done now. Go and grab this. I would say it's done. Let's have a, have a look. <laughs> that looks awesome. Uh, a word of warning, I would say, like a McDonald's apple pie, the filling will be incredibly hot, so we'll leave that for a while before we taste it. Oh, we'll cut this open, we'll see what she looks like. It's still pretty hot, you can feel that. Yeah, that doesn't look too bad. I think it'd be a bit better if I put some more in there by the look at that, but that looks pretty good. We'll give it a bit longer to cool off and we'll taste it. It's cool enough now. <laughs> that smells really good. It smells like um, a little bit of a pastry shop sort of thing. That's pretty good. I think this would be better with a different sort of fruit. This is good, but I think if you had like raspberries or some sort of berry and custard, it would be legit. It would be really good. 
with the pears and peaches. Mm, it works, but it could be better. So there you go, three jaffles, three different sorts. The limit of jaffles is only your imagination, that's all. You can put anything you want in these things. We'll definitely try a few more in the future and other trips. What's your favorite? I'm curious because that uh, that nacho jaffle, I've, I wouldn't have thought to do that, but that was something that we just, like Sarah just dreamed up on the, on the at the minute and, and it worked. So I'm curious, like you got things like spaghetti and stuff like that, and but what else, what else do you use that people might go, that's a bit bloody weird. I'll give it a go. All right, guys. See ya.